Mr. Carter here, back for another video. Uh, today in my science class, we're going to look at the fermentation of simple sugars uh, by yeast. That's why I creatively call it the Yeast Fermentation Lab. It's a very simple lab. All we need is some water, some food for the yeast. I've got flour and sugar, and some yeast, which you can buy in the grocery store. Uh, I have several different flasks, five different flasks, and I'm going to create different conditions for the yeast to grow in. Every flask is going to get water, though, just to provide an environment for the yeast to live in. Uh, they're all going to get 100 grams of water. It's from the same source. It's the same type of water, the same temperature, all that. Um, some of the flasks, four out of five of them, are going to get yeast. Now, yeast is a um, unicellular fungus, kind of like a mushroom, but just one cell. It's a heterotroph. It needs to eat other things. In this case, I'm going to feed it sugars. And it performs anaerobic cell respiration otherwise known as fermentation, instead of aerobic cellular respiration. It comes coated in kind of a freeze-dried food coating so that um, it stays fresh. You can just keep it on your shelf until you need it, and then when you dissolve it in water, the yeast will become active. They'll, they'll, their coating will dissolve, and they'll emerge and uh, start doing their thing. Uh, I'm also going to add some food for the yeast to some of these flasks, not all. Uh, my two foods are sugar and just to have something to compare it to, uh, I'm going to compare it to flour. Now remember, sugar is a carbohydrate called sucrose. It's basically one fructose and one glucose molecule stuck together. Its chemical formula is C12H22O11. Uh, we call it table sugar, uh, but it's just one of many carbohydrates. Uh, you know it's a carbohydrate because it ends in ose, and also because it has that 1 to 2 to 1 ratio of carbon to hydrogen to oxygen. All right, going to try and be precise with my measurements here. Okay, got my sugar, and I'm going to add it to a few of these. So I'm going to add it to this one here, yeast, sh sugar, water, and I'm going to boil this one. I'm also going to weigh some out, and I'm going to add it to flask two. That's just yeast, sugar, and water. And finally, I have this flask that I'm going to get rid of the yeast. I'm, I'm just going to have sugar and water in it together. Uh, this flask all, all the way on the right, flask number five, that's going to be my yeast, flour, and water. So instead of sugar, we're going to try flour. Flour is a more complex carbohydrate, takes a little bit longer to break down, is made of more than just um, fructose and glucose. There's more, more to it. Okay, I'm going to take this one that needs to be boiled. I'm going to stick it on my hot plate here. And we're going to fast forward a little bit while it heats up. Okay, it's a few minutes later, and it's it's come to a boil. You can see it bubble. I, I must I got to stir it the whole time, or else it'll start to cook. Um, but you can see it's it's nice and boiled there. Uh, so I'm going to take it. Let's add it back to the others. Ta-da! Okay, good. And we are ready to begin this experiment. Everything's been added. Lastly, though, we need some way of measuring uh, how much gas is going to come out of these flasks, right? We need some way of measuring the fermentation. So we could measure how much the sugar gets eaten, but I don't have any special ways of doing that. Um, an easier way is just to measure how much carbon dioxide is created. Uh, so there are many ways you can do that. We're going to use just balloons. We're not really caring too much about really precise data on this one. I just want kind of a demonstration that you can see easily. So I'm going to capture it in these balloons. And you can see the balloons, they're all the same type, same brand, even the same color, trying to control for as much as possible here. Um, if you're interested in doing this more quantitatively in a way that you can really count well, you could um, put maybe a carbon dioxide meter on top if you're lucky enough to have one of those, if your school has one of those. Uh, you could also just put on a gas pressure sensor. The higher the pressure inside the container, the more gas must be created inside the container. Uh, so therefore, you can surmise the higher the pressure, the more active the yeast are. Uh, there are many ways you can do this. We're just going to use balloons, though. I like balloons because they're easy and visual. Oh, this one just broke, so I'm going to put a fresh one on. Okay, there we go. So now I'm going to leave them for 24 hours, and we're going to see what happens. Once again, flask number five is yeast, flour, and water. Four is just sugar and water, but no yeast. Three is the yeast, the sugar, the water, and it's been boiled and two is yeast, sugar, and water, and one is just yeast and water. So those are my five different treatments here.
We're going to check in on them in 24 hours. I'd like you to make your hypotheses now. Make sure you have a hypothesis for each of the five treatments. All right, it's been 24 hours. Let's take a look at our solutions. You can see all five lined up here. Um, let's start with the yeast in the water. The balloon looks kind of like it did when we left it. I don't see any bubbles. Looks like no fermentation happened. The yeast, the water, and the sugar, we can see is nice and foamy in the flask, and the balloon is full of gas, presumably CO2. The one that's been boiled has the same stuff in it, but it's been boiled, and that one failed to produce any CO2, failed to ferment. Uh, the one that doesn't have any yeast in it also failed to ferment. We see the balloon's totally limp there. That shouldn't surprise us. And the flask on the right, the yeast and the flour in the water, that one did ferment. We can see it's kind of bubbly and it's got a, a nice full balloon, but it's not quite as full as the other one. So, here are our results. Alright, spoiler alert. Here's the explanation of these results. In our first flask, we had yeast and we had water, but we had no carbohydrates for the yeast to eat, so they weren't able to ferment, so no CO2 was produced. In the second flask, we had yeast, we had water, and we had sugar, and because of that, we had food for the yeast, and so they were able to ferment, and, and they produced lots and lots of CO2. This third flask had all that stuff but it was boiled. What that did was that killed the yeast. So the yeast were dead so they couldn't ferment all those sugars so the balloon is not filled. Fourth flask we had sugar and water but no yeast. There was nothing to do the fermentation reaction so no fermentation occurred. And finally in the fifth flask we have yeast, flour, and water. Now flour is a little bit more of a complex carbohydrate than sugar, sucrose, it's a big polymer made of many, many glucose molecules. So it's going to take those um, yeast uh, organisms a little bit longer to break that flour down into glucose to use for fermentation. So because of that, there's some CO2 produced, but not quite as much as with the sucrose. That's that. Thanks for watching.